Hi you guys. In this video I'm going to show you how I make this little kitty topper for this kitty tiger reflection cake that I made recently. Okay, so I decided, well first I'm cleaning off my hands with a spare piece of fondant, right? This is how I get lint off my hands, off my workspace. I put it on my mat, I put it on any tools that I'm going to use or rub it on. Um, and that gets rid of all the little lint that could get stuck in your project. So, you know, wash your hands, dry them, and then do this, rub them with this um, scrap piece of fondant to keep out any lint. Okay, so I'm going to be using Saraceno modeling paste for this project. Another option would be to use modeling chocolate if you wanted to use that, if you liked working with that better. But this uh, modeling paste works really well for this project. So just a little tip on the Saraceno modeling paste. When it comes out of the bucket, you're going to have to cut off the amount that you want to use. I know it seems pretty hard. But once you start kneading this up, it will work beautifully for you. I don't like using the Saraceno modeling paste that comes in the little plastic packages, like the little amounts. I've always found that I can't get it back to normal. It seems to dry out on me in those. But I love using it from the actual buckets, the actual pail. So that's just a little tip if you're struggling while using the Saraceno modeling paste out of the little plastic packets. Okay, the pail way better for me. Okay, so you're going to cut it off and then knead it up really well so it's nice and uniform throughout. Okay, so, you know, print out your inspiration picture to the size you want your kitty to actually be. There is my inspiration picture so that you can use that as a guide when you're making each section of the kitty. So I'm starting with the head. I'm just kind of holding it up, eyeballing it to see how much I need. And I'm rolling it between my hands to work out any of the cracks so it's nice and smooth and a perfect um, finish on it. Okay. Um, you know, you might have to do a little trial and error with that, but that's why you want to have an inspiration picture so you can get about the right proportions for these things. Now, I have this other inspiration picture that's going to show me the side of its face so I know what the profile of the kitty is supposed to look like. And to make that, I'm just going to use the end of a paintbrush. Um, this thickness looks good to me, so I'm using this one. And about halfway down the face is where I'm going to just make that indentation and that is going to create the forehead for me and then the beginning of the snout and now I'm just going to use my hands to kind of uh, manipulate this a little bit more using my fingers to kind of create the eye socket areas gently pushing them in and just keep checking the side of the face the profile to make sure that it looks the way it should in your inspiration picture and then I'm just using my thumbs and my fingers to just kind of pinch the snout just a little bit just a little bit um, that is powdered sugar there if your hands if you need to dry them out a little bit so they don't stick to your modeling paste and once I've got my snout pretty good, which you'll see it in a minute, um, I'm going to use this sugar shaper, which has got a rounded edge that fits, you know, my inspiration picture for the eye sockets, okay? Really, anything you have that's about, you know, that's got like a rounded edge like that will work. And this was about the right size, so I'm using this side of this sugar shaper. And I'm placing the eyes. You want to just take your time and make sure you place them well. Not too close together, not too far apart. Look at your inspiration picture because that will affect the cuteness of your project. Okay, so you can see my snout there. I've just pinched it a little bit. Um, and now I'm going to take my mini clay shapers. This is size zero clay shapers. And I have links in the project tutorial of this project on cake heads, which there's a link. If you're watching this on YouTube, there's a link um, in the YouTube description box in order to get to the project tutorial with all these supplies on it. Okay, and I'm just pin I'm just um, using the clay shaper to create the indents to make it look like a little nose and then also a little mouth underneath that. Okay, moving on to the ears. So I've already created one. I'm going to show you how I created that. Um, you know, you could make these perfect, you can make these quickly, it's however you want to do it, but you're going to make two of the same size little balls. And again, this might be trial and error for you, but this is about, the, this looked about the right size to me. And I'm pinching with my fingers and then, um, and then the bottom with my thumbs to kind of, it almost looks like a little bit of a nose here. 
right? But we're going to be flipping this around. But we, we want it to look like um, we're going to hollow out this triangle, basically. We're basically creating a triangle that we're going to be able to hollow out. I don't know how better to explain that to you. All right, so now I've turned it around. I pinched kind of that no shape. I've turned it around, and now I'm using my Dresden tools. It just has a flat piece to it, and I'm just going to kind of push that in to flatten out hollow out kind of the middle of this ear while holding it with my thumb and my finger. And that is how I'm going to create the shape I need so that I can attach the bottom of this shape to the head. And then I still have these, um, you know, thinned out edges of the ear and hollowed out ear. Okay, I know that was a horrible way to describe <laughs> how I did that, but hopefully you saw how I did that. Replay it if you need to watch it again. Okay, so you can use a little bit of water on the underneath of that ear, and then I just use my Dresden tool to kind of blend it in to the head. Make sure you place them well. I actually wished I had placed them a little bit farther down the head, a little bit closer to the eyes than I did. My placement was a tiny bit off. Off. And that does kind of affect the cuteness of your kitty. So those things matter, okay? But this is where I end up placing mine. Again, you could put them a little bit farther down the head, closer to the eyes, but just look at your inspiration picture and um, you should be good, okay? And that's how the profile came out. And now I'm going to start creating the fur. There are multiple ways to do this, but this is really an easy quick way to do it. I'm using the pointy edge of my Dresden tool. Any tool that you have that is similar will work. And I am just starting to score in little lines, kind of rows of lines, into the modeling paste. Um, but you know, the direction in which you do this makes a difference. So I just kind of looked at my inspiration picture to kind of find out the flow of the fur on my kitty. So the forehead kind of, I, I'm scoring up and back. The next to the nose, I'm kind of scoring out to the sides. And then I'm kind of fanning out from there, right? So I'm kind of fanning out from that middle section on the forehead. I'm going to fan out to the on either side as I go. Um, up and out to the sides a little bit, okay? Again, my verbal description here isn't great, but if you just look at what I'm doing, then you'll get the idea. Um, but yeah, paying attention to the flow of the fur does make a difference. You don't want to do just random lines going any which way. Okay, and then um, to, to get it to look like it's kind of sticking out on the sides, I kind of push my Dresden um, point in a little bit deeper and pull a little bit more just to kind of get that the, the edges to look a little extra furry. Okay, so that's how I've started with the head. Um, now my head is still soft, so I can't really do all the way around or I'm going to kind of mess up what I've done. So I'm going to save the rest for later. I'll do a little bit on the back. On the back, I'm now going to kind of score down. And yeah, I'm going to let that sit now. And I'm going to move on to the body. Okay, I've got another little inspiration picture so I can see the head is, you know, the body's at least twice the size of the head, if not a little bit longer. So I'm going to keep that in mind as I grab my next section of modeling paste. I want this um, amount to be at least twice the amount of the head. Okay, so that's kind of my guide. And so I'm just going to kind of roll it into a little bit of a sausage shape there. I'm going to hold my head up to it. And this is going to be good enough for me. It's not quite big enough, but I'm actually going to add a little bit of foil into the center of this body just to kind of, I don't want it to be too heavy and this kind of lightens it up. But what it also does is it allows me to not have to wait for this to dry and I can stick skewers into the body and they won't go poking through the entire body, right? I can keep working without worrying about drying time by adding my tin foil into the body so that I can add my legs to it and such. So. That's why I've done that. And now I'm just kind of rubbing out the lines, getting it nice and smooth, even though we're going to be creating fur, so you don't have to spend too much time on that. And now I'm kind of messing with the, um, the front section of the body there so that when it comes time to attach my head, I'll be able to do that well. I'm kind of flattening it out, just making sure it's going to sit right. I'm going to want my kitty to look down over my cake a tiny bit for this particular project, so I'm keeping that in mind as well.
And now moving on to the legs. Okay, so I'm going to make the front legs first. I'm rolling out a little sausage piece here using my inspiration photo that I've printed to the accurate size as a guide as to how thick and how long these little legs should be. Okay, so um, I rolled it into that sausage shaped kind of tapered at the end and then I'm just using my fingers to manipulate the paw um, so that I have this little you know flatter piece at the end for the paw and then I'm gonna roll it and pinch so that I get a little bit of an ankle there and we're gonna make two of those so that's the first one now I've got two I'm gonna get out a skewer and I'm going to twist the skewer as I push it through my leg from the top this is going to be the front right paw. Okay, so this is going to be one of my anchors of my kitty so that I can anchor my kitty into the top of my cake. And then I'm going to cut this down a little bit so the top will go into the tin foil of the body and the bottom will be able to stick through the cake when it comes time. Um, I'm doing that now and then I will manipulate the leg a little bit more um, in a minute. Okay, so for the back legs, a cat has these you know different kind of back legs they're hinged differently so we have to keep that in mind and look at our inspiration picture so I'm rolling out the same as I did for the front legs and then I'm squeezing the ankle like I did for the front and then also to make the paw which I'm going to end up doing on all of these um, legs I'm just using that little handle of the paintbrush to kind of create like the toe section the puffy toe section with an indentation going back okay now I need to make that that different jointed um, back leg so I'm bending it there using the help of my paintbrush and my fingers just to kind of create that back joint right okay now that I've done that I need to make another anchor for my kitty here so um, again skewer twisting it pushing it back down through kind of the straight leg but I'm still keeping that joint there and then I'm just gonna have to use my fingers to kind of make sure I don't lose the joint that I created and that's gonna be in the back leg I'm gonna cut that down a little bit and that will stick through the tin foil of the body as well um, I actually recommend using a skewer in all four of the legs because they can easily break, especially when using modeling paste. If you don't, once it comes time to add your kitty to your cake, they could definitely break off because they're thinner and the body is thick, you know. So I would actually put a skewer through all four of the legs. And you don't have to leave, definitely don't leave all four skewers long enough to poke through the cake because you're going to have problems when you try to poke all four of those in at the same time. Um, even one will be fine. Just leave one skewer long enough to poke into the cake and then you could use modeling chalk. Um, melted candy melts under the paws of the rest of them to attach to the cake. Um, here I've left two of the skewers long enough but I actually wouldn't recommend that because that can cause problems for you as well. So just leave one of the skewers long enough. All right. Um, but I'm putting it onto a dummy cake now so that I can work on it further. This really just helps me to work on it to get the rest of this kitty in shape here. Okay, so now I'm just using my fingers to make sure all looks good. Um, I'm blending in the legs. You saw me do that a second ago um, to blend in the seams so that they flow into the body of the cat. Now I'm using my Dresden tool to create more fur, um, kind of in sections going down, and then also to create the little toes on the paws. Mine are looking a little thick here, so I'm going to have to end up slimming them down a little bit. Just keep in mind that, you know, what things should look like by looking at your inspiration picture. I'm starting to create the fur on the body in the front there as well. Watch the pattern that I use um, to make sure that it, it looks appropriate. Now I've created the front leg, and I've stretched it out a little bit farther than the right leg um, because this kitty's going to supposed to be dipping its toe into the water so that's why I've done that but again I didn't use a skewer in that leg but I ran into problems when I put it onto the cake so I would definitely use a skewer at a slant enter it in at a slant going up into the body the way that leg is slanted um, that will help keep it straight 
when you are adding it onto the cake so it won't break and it won't bend on you and all of that good stuff. Okay, adding my fur now onto the legs. And make sure you keep that, that back joint there on that back leg. Create the paws on all four. Very simple, easy. It worked pretty well. Okay, look at your inspiration picture for the placement of the legs um, to make sure that they look right. And now I've got my last leg to add on the back there. Just kind of putting um, my head on so I can see where, you know, I want the head to be looking down just a, slanted a little bit so I'm keeping that in mind. Um, you don't really have to make that divot like I just made there. I actually ended up having to fill that in a little bit. I, it was a little bit too too much so don't even bother doing that. Just you know make just create that front part so that the head could rest nicely on it. And then I'm using a little skewer that will eventually help attach my head and I'm going to use candy melts to help that as well. So it doesn't have to be super long. Make it a little bit longer than I did. We don't want it poking through the bottom of the body but um, we just want a little bit of help holding on our head. See here, I had to add a little bit more of the modeling paste because I <laughs> made my divot too big, so don't do the way I did. Now, I'm not actually attaching this right now. I'm just kind of holding it on there so that I can, um, to help me create the fur so I can see how it should look. You don't even have to do that if you don't need to, but it's just kind of helping me visualize this. Um, okay, so then continue with your fur. I'm going to leave the head um, to rest a little bit and dry up for you. Um, adding the back leg here. You see how I kind of flatten out the top of the leg so that I can kind of blend it into the body a little bit there. Um, again, I didn't add a skewer in that one. I would say that would be the only one you wouldn't really need to add a skewer to if you don't want to. That one wasn't affected at all, but I definitely needed to add a skewer to that to both front legs, so make sure that you do that. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of... I don't have both the back legs lined up perfectly and that's on purpose because my picture, you know, is not showing me that they're not lined up perfectly. Those little details kind of make a difference in the realism of your project here. Okay, so then I just I'm kind of using my dressing tool to kind of create these indentations behind those two front legs and just kind of using my fingers just to squeeze in a little bit. I don't want it to look like a blob. I want it to have a little bit of shape. So um, so this is help creating a little bit of shape to my kitty. And then if there's any excess you can just kind of push it underneath the kitty and then um, you can continue creating your fur from there. And you can just watch the pattern um, if you need to see in what pattern the fur is created here. For this back leg, I want to make sure it's nice and secure. So I'm actually going to add just a little bit more modeling paste back there to kind of help fill in that gap and then blend that all together. So if you need to do that in any areas, you can definitely do that. I'm creating more of my fur here. And then there will be a time actually where um, I will cut off a little bit of modeling paste like in between the two front legs there just was a little too much bulk there so you know definitely do that if you need to just look at your overall kitty if it's too bulky in some places cut some modeling paste off that front left leg right here was a little bit too thick I needed to thin it out so I cut some off of the back and off of the sides Really easy to do with modeling paste because you can fix the seams and the cuts really well. So that's kind of one of the beautiful things with modeling paste. But same with modeling chocolate um, as well. You can do the same thing. Seams blend in beautifully. So don't be afraid to cut pieces off if you've got too much on there. And, you know, make sure that, see, my front leg, because I don't have that skewer in, it wants to bend on me. So that's why that skewer will be very helpful if you add that there. Okay, and this is how my kitty's body looks when I am finished with it. I took a little bit out between the two front paws, and I've got most of my fur um, created. And so now I'm moving on to the tail. Super easy, just a thin little sausage cut to the right 
length and tapered at the end. And then I'm actually just going to attach it right on the top there and blend that fur in with the rest of the body. And then you can use really anything that's small enough in your house. I've got a little garlic container here and some tin foil to kind of prop it up and let it dry. And that modeling paste will dry. The tail's not heavy, so it shouldn't, it never broke off on me. Um, just leave it that way and don't touch it and it should dry just fine. Okay, now I need to go back to the face and I'm going to fill in the eyes with little eyeballs, cut them to the same size. Again, you might need a little trial and error. Um, put in a, a tiny bit of water to help secure them in the eye sockets. You don't want them too big that they're bulging too much out of the eye sockets, but again, you don't want them too small either. So yeah, you might need a little trial and error with that. Now I've got some white candy melts melted and I'm going to use this kind of as my glue. So now I'm attaching my head um, and if you have magic chef rubber magic free spray that's amazing because then you won't have to sit there and hold that head until it's set. I definitely recommend having that on hand. Um, otherwise you're going to have to hold it there for a little bit so that it doesn't fall off you know a couple of minutes until it sets. Um, and then I wouldn't touch it after that for at least five to ten more minutes. Okay, so magic freeze spray, amazing to have because you could just spray that and it will um, sl really harden up that chocolate for you and you won't have to wait. Now I'm just adding a little bit more melted chocolate to fill in the gap between the neck and then just kind of poking at it to create a fur effect on that as well. All right, now I'm going to color. I'm coloring the eyes. I'm using a little bit of a lime petal dust on the eyes first. You know, you can color yours any way you want, but if you're making yours the same as mine, this is how I've done it. So I've got that lime green, and now I'm using a little bit of black, and I'm using kind of a flat finish kind of paintbrush. Now, um, this is not, first of all, doing this on camera is not easy either because you have to have the right angle. What I'm trying to do is trying to get just a, a shadow of black around the eyes. It didn't really go super well. I ended up adding too much, and then later on I kind of, had to go over some of my black with some white and it, and then it kind of created this blue which I wasn't super in love with so just take your time doing this and in fact if you want to do this before you add in the little eyes in their eye sockets you want to add a little bit of black to it first just get a shadow around those eye sockets I recommend that that's a good idea and now I'm just going to paint on the stripes and I'm using edible art paint black edible art paint and I'm just gonna let you watch how I do it in case you're going to do the same sort of thing or you know go off and do your own thing I'll just let you watch and I'll come back when I get to the next step Okay, so there is my striped black and white kitty. Um, and now I'm going to add just a little bit of gray petal dust to kind of soften it up a little bit. Give it another layer, another dimension of color. Um, you could just leave it like this if you like that look, but I felt like, you know, it, it, it needed this, this extra layer here. Okay, so a little bit of gray petal dust. Um, and I'm just brushing it on in some places. I'm looking at my inspiration picture where I see some shadow on the white fur and just uh, adding that on to get a little bit more of a realistic look. And then I went back, like I told you, over the eyes with a little bit of white just to get rid of some of that black, which caused a little bit of a blue look, <laughs> which I wasn't really looking for. But, you know, in the end, I just would be a little bit more careful when adding my black around the eyes. And that is it. That is how I created my kitty. When you want to place your kitty on top of the cake, again, 
one skewer go um, extending out from one of the paws is enough and then you can just add a little bit of melted chocolate to the bottom of the paws as well and that will attach your kitty firmly to the top of your cake if you want to see how I made this full tiger kitty reflection project you can come over to cakeheads.com become a member become part of our fabulous cakeheads family our members are amazing and so helpful and we're we have a community group where we're in every day helping each other out, giving each other advice, some um, experiences, and just really helping each other with all things cake. See you later.